So I get a call yesterday from Ken Coyne, who was the last commercial fisherman here on Washington Island, about going out on his uh, on his boat when he goes either to set his nets or to to take his lift. And uh, saw him today over by his restaurant. Stopped in. He was working on his nets, and he said, "Yeah." Weather looks good. He might be going out this evening. And so I asked, what time should I meet him down at the dock? And he just looked at me and he said, I'll call you. So I'm hoping that he calls. I do recall he said that he goes out normally around 6-ish in the evening to set his nets when he goes out at night. Now I'm deciding what to bring. I only want to bring what I have to bring because there isn't a whole lot of room on that boat and I certainly don't want to be in the way. So we are here. Jackson Harbor is up here. <laughs> About as far as you can get across the island from each other. 16 to 35 millimeter lens on that boat. Definitely, we're gonna need that. This is an old map, the airport isn't even on here. 24 to 105, F4 lens, no. 70 to 200, 4.0 lens, yes. Microphone pouch, don't need that. ND filter for the M50 camera, the vlogging camera, gonna need that. Cable release, not gonna need that. Cleaning kit, I will need that. ND filters, no, no. Cleaning cloth, definitely going to need that. Spare batteries, always bring spare batteries. Spare batteries for the 5D Mark IV. What else do I want to bring? Bug spray, no. Bottle of water, yes. ND filters for the Osmo Action, yes. Spare battery for Osmo Action. I have two fully charged, one for the M50. ND filters, yes. This, this, I don't need. All right. Now, I just hope that he calls. bears. I almost forgot the gummy bears. Hey, 
Kevin. Uh, Ken here. Uh, if you want to go tonight, I'm going to go at 7 o'clock. Uh, meet you in Jackson Harbor. Bye. All right. Good news. I was just about ready to give up hope. <laughs> All right. Set a trap net in here. Well, I'm inquisitive. Now I'm going to go see what it says on this thing. It might be the. Um, oh. It might be a state test testing. Great, great Lakes Environmental Center. Probably testing water. Unusual for me to have any company at all.
already doesn't sound so good. Water depth's about 60 feet here. That's where they were a while ago. I hope they're still hanging around here, but we'll find out. I'm going to go from one box to the other, hopefully without a hitch. This time of year, if I get a half a dozen to the box, I'm, I'm lucky, I'm happy. This time, this has always been a slow time. When I need fish the most, I get the fewest. And I flatly refuse to freeze them for the restaurant, so. And this was a unusual year. We couldn't ship fish this spring because there's, of course, all the restaurants south were shut down. See when I pull them up? How they're clean out there. It washes out, but it just you just get it right back in the same night. Until the water reaches a certain temperature and all that crap comes to the surface. Used to never wear gloves. I never wore gloves until the zebra mussels got so thick I didn't have a choice. They were cutting. Cutting and slicing. Piece of cake until you get about a ton of fish to the day, and then you got a little. That keeps you busy. Little anchor chain. Well, one string down. This is a crazy spot back here. It's about a quarter mile that the fish show up in June and hang around for about a month. If you're lucky, you get 50 pounds out of four boxes. <coughs> but quite often it's uh, 12 fish. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's intriguing, you know, we'll actually see them on the graph. But you don't get everything that's on the graph. You don't can't tell the size of them. I think a lot of it is like a kindergarten. My father, he had fished and farmed until he was 35, just for other people. And then uh, he met my mother, and he wanted to have a family, so he decided he'd farm. So he farmed until he was 60 years old, and then farming went out on the island. And, but Dad and I farmed together the first 17 years of my life, and we fished together the next 13 years. With a, a brief time I worked for the ferry line. Yeah, my brother Tom fishes with me in the winter, or when he's not farming at all. <clears throat> but he's, uh, Tom is much older than I am. He loves when I tell him that. My oldest son, who fished with me for about seven years, in between school and he was been to Oshkosh and then Green Bay and then uh, had a nephew who had an aneurysm and he lost all train of thought so he took seven years off before he went back to school. But that gave him time to figure out what he wanted to do and then somebody asked him and they said well are you ever gonna are, do you have the fishing bug? And Jesse just said well I might have the fishing bug but my dad's infested. So I guess that's pretty much the way it is. I kept going and he's, he's he has the knowledge, you never know. Right now he's working for Land Trust in Sturgeon Bay. Him and his and his wife works for uh, soil and water conservation. There's boxes here that are 75 years old. Well, they must be. <laughs> I've been fishing them for 50, 50 years just about. It'll be 50 years in September. That's pretty good when you're only 50 years old. If we had them, had them made, instead of make, putting the pieces together ourselves, they'd run about $800 a box. But uh, by putting them together ourselves, we're down to about $500. Yeah, that's enough. better than an e-ticket ride at Disney World. Did you see that sunset? 
in his stories are. Well, I think they're probably everything you would expect from a 50-year-long commercial fisherman. He's got stories. I didn't even record half the stories that he told me. He had a concern with that. Tomorrow. Tomorrow he's invited me back out and Colleen to come with, if she'd like, to uh, lift those nets. So uh, I'm going to take him up on it. So we're going to meet out here at around 8.30, 8.40 tomorrow morning and head on out and uh, retrieve those nets. See how many fish he's caught. And have him tell me some more stories. They're great. They're great. Wow. All right. Well, that's it for tonight. What an amazing, amazing time. The last commercial fisherman on Washington Island. Now that stuff behind the door. Man. Coming up in the concluding episode of Behind the Door, Washington Island. Reeling in nets full of whitefish and maritime tales with fisherman Ken Coyne. Even the elusive and camera shy Colleen makes a cameo, bringing good luck to the catch. See a third one, wow. Colleen, you're gonna have to stay on here. My dad always said women were bad luck. What an interesting guy. And what an experience being out. So join me next time for the lift. Thanks for watching everyone and until then take care and we'll see you down the road.